So how are bit error rate and signal to noise ratio related in digital communications? And I've got some axes here that I'm going to fill in in a minute, but let's start thinking about the most basic digital binary phase shift keying. And I'm going to draw a probability density function here for the output, what you receive if you have a signal sent in Gaussian and received in Gaussian noise. So let's say we have X sent and it's received in Gaussian noise. Uh, this is Y. Okay, so let's draw the conditional probability of Y given that X equals A. So let's say we've sent a positive A and we'd like to draw what the received density function is. Okay, so we've got an a, a energy sent, we're sending plus A for a digital plus one, and we're sending minus A for a digital zero, so binary ones and zeros, we're going to send them with a plus A and a minus A. And if it's in Gaussian noise, uh, then the received PDF is going to look like this, a Gaussian shape centered over A, condition when we condition on sending and A. So we send, if we send a plus one, we send a waveform with amplitude A, then the receiver is going to receive at Y, we're going to receive a signal which is a random number uh, because of the Gaussian noise. And if you want to know more about Gaussian noise, check out the links to the other videos on the channel below. So this is the probability density function and there's a link for PDFs if you want to know more about them. Uh, and so this is the conditional condition on sending an A. So at the receiver, we're going to make an error if we receive a signal that is a negative amplitude, okay, or the opposite phase because we're doing phase shift keying. That's the same as saying the opposite phase. Okay, so if we add up the area under this part of the curve, uh, we, this is the, the tail of a Gaussian, that area there is the probability of making an error because we sent a positive A. That's what we say, condition on sending a positive A. If it comes with the opposite phase or a negative amplitude, uh, then we would make an error. And the area under this curve is the probability of doing that. So that's the probability of making an error. Uh, it's also one minus this probability. So we could add up this area and do one minus that, and we'd have the probability of making an error. So what, what is that? Well, uh, this is one minus, I'm going to draw this on here because it's going to be what we're going to do later. So it's one minus this area, and this area is the integral from zero to infinity of a Gaussian. So that's one divided by the square root of two pi sigma squared, all in the square root, exponential of minus y minus a, all squared, divided by a two sigma squared dy. Okay, so this is the probability of error in BPSK. Uh, and they, it's important to note that the signal to noise ratio is equal to A squared, because that's the power in our signal, divided by the noise power in naught. Okay, so this is the binary case. Uh, and the probability that you make an error in the binary case is the same as the bit error rate. Okay, in binary. But let's look at something more uh, advanced because we're going to compare it to this. So let's look at quadrature amplitude modulation. And in this case, uh, we have a two-dimensional wave, uh, waveform because we can not just positives and negative A, but we can have amplitudes and phases. In this case, it was only the uh, phase that changed. They both had an amplitude of A. It was either one phase or the opposite. Uh, in this case here for QAM, uh, we're going to have uh, let's do four QAM in this picture here. Uh, we're going to have four different uh, phases we can have, and for obviously for more general QAM, we have different amplitudes as well. Okay, so in this case, if we're sending at the same signal to noise ratio, uh, then this has to be a length A along here. So this distance here is A uh, divided by the square root of two. Uh, and so this height here also is a divided by the square root of 2 for the same signal to noise ratio. So in this case we're looking, this is the real and imaginary, we're looking down on top of this curve here. So imagine taking this curve and flipping it vertically, that's this axis here, and you do the same, flip it vertically and shift it around is this axis, uh, this gives you the QAM signal. Okay, so there's four different phases in this case. When are we going to make an error? 
well, we're going to, well, let's say, when are we going to get it right? If we think of this curve in the two dimensional case now, there's a Gaussian hill sitting above, uh, let's say we're conditioned on sending this symbol, then there's a Gaussian hill uh, that's coming out of the page if probability is coming out of the page. Uh, now because we've got an extra dimension for QAM. So this is positive hill uh, and you've got to think about integrating this positive hill. So let's integrate the positive hill over this region here. This is when we get it correct. So anywhere out in here all the way out to infinity here we're going to be getting it correct. And so as just as we did here we're going to do 1 minus this probability here. Okay so in this case it's a double integral. Uh, from 0 to infinity, from 0 to infinity, and we're going to do 1 minus this of, I won't do the full equation, but this is a 2D Gaussian, uh, Gaussian centered at that place there, centered at that location there uh, in dx and dy. Uh, this is our equation for the bit, uh, the symbol error rate for QAM. Okay, so now it's not the same as the bit error rate because now we're sending two bits every time we send a symbol because we've got four symbols. Okay, so let's look at how all of these relate to each other and can be compared to each other. Okay, so let's look at the signal to noise ratio here and we always plot that as decibels, dB. So along this axis here we're doing the signal to noise ratio, uh, plotting it in dB. It's important that you remember that. Uh, and then here we're going to plot the symbol error rate, the SER. Okay, and we also plot this in a log scale. So this is a log scale up here. So this is 10 to the minus 5 all the way up 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the 0. So 10 to the minus 1 means one error every 10 symbols. This is one error every 100 symbols, one error every 1,000 symbols, and so on. So how do we compare these different uh, parameters? Well, if we evaluate this for BPSK, then we're going to get a curve uh, that looks uh, like this. And I've drawn the endpoints in here so that it helped me to sketch them. I'm trying to sketch it as accurately as I can just by freehand, but this is BPSK. So what this means is uh, if you send a symbol, let's say with four, a signal to noise ratio of four, so the relative values of A and N naught such that the signal to noise ratio is four decibels, then you can expect to get one error every 200 symbols that you send. Okay, so this is the SER versus SNR. Uh, don't forget also, you, you can, or it's important to point out, you can have negative SNR in the decibels. All that means is the amplitude is smaller than, the power of the signal, power of A, is smaller than the power of the noise. Uh, so this is perfectly reasonable, and so don't get tricked and, and make sure you, you realize that these negative values here on this axis, because it's in dB, it simply means the noise is very strong, even stronger than the signal. Okay, so this is BPSK. Uh, I'm going to draw what it is for 4PSK. So if you had 4 uh, phase shift keyed, uh, that's this one here. 8PSK um, uh, looks like this here. Uh, 16 looks more like this. And uh, even more, 32 is out here. Okay, so this is 32 PSK. Okay, so this is uh, 16, 8, and 4. Okay, so why do they go this way? Why do they increase up here? Well, uh, if we look at the constellation diagrams, uh, it should make sense to us. In, PS, in BPSK, we simply have these two symbols. If we're looking at this constellation, the top-down constellation, we've either got a plus or a minus. In uh, let's let me draw the situation for 16 uh, phase shift keyed, so 16 PSK. Uh, then you're going to have uh, these four here, uh, plus uh, all on a circle. So this is this gives us eight PSK. And then if you have constellations in here, uh, all these possible phases in here is going to give us uh, 16 PSK. So they're all on the same amplitude, they've all got an amplitude of A, and they're all in the circle, but you have 16 uh, values. And now what about 16 QAM? How is that different? Well, 16 QAM, 
and we're going to compare to those. Uh, well, here you've got amplitudes and phases. So you've got these four here, which is the four QAM that we talked about down over here. Uh, but now we've got uh, other amplitudes and phases on a square grid, which gives us uh, 16 QAM. So this is the difference between 16 QAM and 16 PSK is the location of these constellation points, which means that the different combinations of amplitudes and phases. Because don't forget these points here just tell you about the amplitude and phase of the sinusoidal signal that's representing the data bits. So in this case, there's four data bits for every symbol. Same here, four data bits for every symbol, but they're located in different places. Constellation points are located in different places, which means that the sinusoidal signals have different amplitudes and phases in each of these two examples to represent those four bits. So how do we compare these two, or well, what are some of the positives and, and negatives? Well, let me, let me just draw in, uh, I'll use a red pen here uh, for um, how do they, well, first of all, let's say why do they go out like this? Well, as you get more data bits per symbol, uh, then let's say here 16, you've got four data bits per symbol. As we saw, the constellation points are closer together, which means there's going to be more effect from the noise and there's going to be more errors because for the same width of this Gaussian shape if the constellation points get closer together then the noise will be more likely to send you to the neighboring or any of the other constellation points at the receiver because there's noise. Okay so for the same amount of noise when the same signal to noise ratio if you put more uh, constellation points, which means you're sending more bits per symbol, then the points have to be closer together, which means you're going to have more error. So for the same signal to noise ratio, so for here, for signal to noise ratio of 8, you could get uh, 10 to the minus 4 bit error rate for BPSK, but you'd have 10 to the minus 2 bit error rate for 8 PSK, 10 to the minus 1 for 16, and something higher even for 32 PSK. Okay, so the benefit you get is you're sending more data bits per symbol, but the penalty you pay is your symbol error rate goes up. And so this is a choice that you, that you need to make when you're trading off data rate with power. Okay, and then what about why would you choose 16 PSK over 16 QAM, for example, or which one should you choose? Well, let's look at where, uh, for example, 64 QAM uh, comes. Or let me draw 16 QAM because we've got that one here. So 60, 16 QAM is just a little bit to the right of 8 PSK. And so that's an interesting thing, uh, I think, too. So this is 16 QAM, the red one here. And even 64 QAM, in fact, uh, goes from one side of 16 QAM to the other. It starts off even below 16 QAM and then goes on to the other side of 16 QAM. Uh, this one here is 64 QAM. Okay, so that's 64 QAM has a much lower probability of error or bit error rate than even 32 PSK. It's roughly comparable to 16 PSK. So you get a much lower error rate for 64 QAM than you even do for 16 PSK. So you're sending more data bits and you're getting the same error rate as 16 PSK. So why would you use 16 PSK? You'd be better off surely using 64 QAM. Well, in PSK, you don't need to worry about the amplitude in your receiver. So if you don't have accurate amplifiers in your receiver, uh, or very fast time varying channels with fast amplitude variations, uh, then you might be better off with PSK. All I'm drawing here is for additive white Gaussian noise channels. Okay, but if your channels have other aspects like fading, where the amplitude changes quickly, then it's going to be difficult to work out between the different amplitudes in the QAM constellation, but you don't need to worry about the amplitude in PSK. So in AWGN channels, it's much better to use QAM, but in other channels, it might be better to use PSK. And it's important to understand these graphs and the relationship between them. Uh, one other graph to show is uh, differential phase shift keying, so we get where you don't have a very good phase estimate. Uh, and so differential phase shift keying, this one is, is actually here, DPSK, that's called. Uh, and in this case, you don't know the exact phase in your receiver because you don't have, uh, perhaps you don't have accurate enough phase 
blocking in the electronics of your receiver, but you work out the difference between the symbols and you code the data into the difference between the two symbols uh, rather than the symbols themselves. And this gives you an advantage that you don't have to have that, co um, that uh, coherence in your receiver, but you do pay a penalty uh, because the curve is at a higher bit symbol error rate for the same signal to noise ratio. So hopefully this has given you some insights into the relationship between the bit error rate and of course the symbol error rate and the signal to noise ratio. If you found it useful, uh, please like the video, it helps others to find it, subscribe to the channel and check out the webpage for more videos with a full categorised list.